If what your parents taught you about money was true, then wouldn't everyone be rich? There are nine specific myths that people hold about money, and we gotta break them. Myth number one is if you want something for yourself, you gotta take it from someone else, also known as scarcity or the finite pie. See, scarcity brings out the worst in us. It's the greatest destroyer of wealth. No luck or saving or discipline, no rate of return or no luck. Nothing is going to save you from scarcity. It destroys wealth. And this belief is that it's all about the strongest person wins. It's this zero sum game. And like, I remember having this Rolling Stone magazine that my wife got me because as you see with the hair, wanted to be a rock star. That was more of a political magazine than it was actually a rock magazine. And I was reading an article with this massive dude bigger than buildings eating this pie and little tiny crumbs coming down to these people that were just fighting over and thinking, oh, there's not enough to go around. That thought process is absolutely destroyed because it has us to think that we've got to be competitive and we've got to destroy in order to create. And it has us think the worst in other people. You don't want to have to be a predator to win. You lose focus on how to create win-win in this world about value creation. That is the key. See, finite resources, even if there's only a certain amount of those, obviously, they can change hands many times. Like if I have a dollar, and I go buy something from someone else, they can take that dollar and use it again. How many times does that dollar circulate? In the economy, that's called velocity. And the more exchange we have, the more wealth is created. If we look back hundreds of years ago, and we see some of the wealthiest people in the world, like if we look at King Louis XIV, I mean, this dude had like a thousand servants. He had, you know, the Palace of Versailles. He had so much wealth at the time, but I would say that there's people that can parallel that that are upper middle class now, because they could fly anywhere in the world within 24 hours. They have plumbing. I mean, hell, that's a big deal, right? Because they didn't have plumbing back then. They got air conditioning. They've got more food choices. I mean, this is something that my buddy Rich Christensen pointed out to me that made tons of sense. So even if there's a finite amount of resources, we can become innovative. We can use human ingenuity. We can create new ways of transportation or be more, you know, have innovation around energy and be less fuel dependent. These kind of things is where abundance comes from. But this hoarding mindset makes people live in fear where they look to take more than they give. I call it the consumer condition, a place where scarcity rules, where entitlement is born and bred, where profit is somehow evidence of deception. But in abundant thinking, profit is evidence of value creation. So in scarcity, we look for those fringe examples where profit is wrongdoing or coercion. And yes, there are major corporations that are involved in that. But the reality is most small business owners, most people out there are looking to add value and dollars follow that value. But scarcity isn't going to have us see that because scarcity is the mantra of fear, doubt, and worry. Worry leads to inaction. It's not productive. And so if we look at the finite pie, it might be thinking, oh, there's only a certain amount of like oil that's out there and it's non-renewable resource, for example, but then we find other ways for transportation. We become less oil dependent. That's through human ingenuity and innovation, right? So we can look at so many examples where one person got wealth, but they actually created a lot more wealth for other people through jobs, through improvement of life, through all of a sudden the standard and quality of life raises from generation to generation because of what we've been able to build upon from previous generations. If we look now, it seems like the wealthiest time ever in most places. As you look and see what people drive, what people can do that they couldn't even think about doing in just two generations ago. So when we're thinking more abundantly, then we're gonna focus on resourcefulness. When we think more abundantly, we're gonna think about how do we deliver value? How do we serve others? How do we solve problems and in an exchange, people utilize their money? See, money is just a storage of value. It's just a storage of energy. And so if someone gives me money and I don't have to spend that to have my lifestyle at this point because maybe I'm economically independent, which is a major objective. When you have economic independence, you're gonna invite more abundance in your life. That's where you have enough assets and entrepreneurial-based income to cover your basic expenses. Meaning if you didn't go to a job tomorrow, you'd still have enough money coming in to cover your basic bills. When that happens, you can start to think more abundantly. You can start to think about a bigger vision. You can think about bigger impact that you can make on others. So that's where abundance comes from, is when we think win first, then play. When we think win-win or no deal, 
See, win-lose is part of the investing world out there. If you're in options trading, or maybe if you're overly reliant upon the stock market, one person sells, the other person you know, is going, well, the market's going to go down, so I know it's now it's time to sell, the other person buys and the money goes down. You know, that could be a win-lose situation. But the innovation or the implementation of a new idea that improves humanity, that improves people's lives, that impacts them in a positive way, you can make money doing that and they can actually spend money and have a better life, have a higher quality of life. So I think what happens is, in scarcity, we start to look about this disease of more, where we are encouraged to live outside of our means. It's kind of this notion of keeping up with the Joneses, right? It's where jealousy exists. We want what other people have. We neglect to uh, recognize or even enjoy what we currently have with our own abilities and capabilities. And we start to become in scarcity and only think about what we don't have or what others have. And I look in my 20s, I was kind of an a-hole that way. I just want to have more than anyone else I knew. I was just gonna work harder. And I was gonna drudge through it. I was gonna sacrifice my health. And hell, even that wasn't worth the cost because it was coming from scarcity. It was coming from, I wanna be, I wanna feed my ego. See, wealth can actually be something that comes from this value and from serving humanity and make money from that. And that is the abundant mindset. So how do we do this? Well, let's look through just a few questions from my book of Killing Sacred Cows and just ask you six questions to help you to rate to find out what level of abundance are you in or are you tending towards scarcity? Because this is what I find. People in scarcity, they don't even recognize it. They're just living, this is how life is. It's just reality to them. And that perception keeps them limited. They're never gonna have wealth, it will be elusive. And even if they gain a little bit of money, they'll be afraid they might lose it. Or they'll feel like someone else has more than them. And it becomes an unwinnable game. So as I ask these questions, you're just gonna rate them on a scale of one to 10. And then at the end, we'll divide by 60, okay? So question number one, you're living something close to your ideal life today. Scale of one to 10. You're living something close to your ideal life today. There's not ever perfection, but you just can appreciate the imperfections. Second question, you feel confident, assured, and in control of every place that you invest your money. So you know why you're investing, what your benefit is, how you gain, what your exit strategy is, so you feel confident, assured, and in control of every place you invest your money, scale of one to 10. Question number three, all of your financial components are working together and you have the right team in place to see them through. Like, it would be insurmountable for me to get everything done that needs to be done in my financial life if I had all of that coming just to me and I didn't have the right team. I mean, how would I know everything there is to know about accounting? How would I know every detail around writing up an estate plan or a corporate structure and filing those kind of things? So having the right team can bring you not only peace of mind, but can buy you time and get you expertise that it's hard to gain on your own because no one's an expert in everything. So on a scale of one to 10, how well is your financial team working? Number four, you feel energized and empowered by your finances right now. You don't think about it and go into scarcity or fear or frustration or worry. You actually feel like, wow, I'm making progress. I'm going towards where I want to be. I've got economic independence or on the path to economic independence. I have good cash flow. I've protected my downside. On a scale of one to 10, how do you feel about your finances right now? Number five, you do what you want to do on a daily basis without fear about money. Like when I went on vacation, I remember the first time to San Diego with my wife and our newborn child, his name's Breck. And as we go there, I was in constant fear like, well, I'm not working, so I'm not earning money right now. And now we're here, we're spending money. So I was a miser. And that miserly mentality meant I didn't enjoy a single moment of that vacation or trip because I was thinking about the money I wasn't making and I wasn't enjoying the present moment. So are you able to actually take some time away and enjoy life? Are you able to go out and do things without money clouding your thinking every step of the way? Is money no longer your primary reason or excuse why you would do or not do something? That's where financial freedom really exists. All right, final question six. There are no more money worries that you could remove from your life to improve it. There are no more money worries you could remove from your life to improve it. Once you add up your score, anywhere from zero to 60, you're gonna divide that score by 60 and it's now gonna give you a percentage. So let's say you got 50 out of 60, that would be 0.83 or 83%. So it's like a B minus. Now, if your score is below that B minus, it's really time to start shifting your scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. 
If you're above a B, well, you might, you know there's a little bit of course correction, not force correction. It's just having the right rituals and habits on a daily basis, spending time with the right people, coming back to this YouTube channel and watching videos, and just doing the work to help you to become more abundant. It's about taking action rather than worrying. It's about making sure you are really reading and filling your head with the right things, and most importantly, that you're building and living a life that you love. And just by paying attention to your finances, that's gonna be a big difference. This will mean the difference between just leading a life that you tolerate and leading a life of value. Well, now you have the knowledge to transform your thoughts into profits and build the life you love. If you wanna learn more on this topic, check out my video on why hard work isn't enough.